Uh, I'm Matt Siegfried. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Geophysics and Mines. I'm a physical glaciologist, so I try and study how ice sheets and glaciers move and evolve. Glaciology is the, the physical study of an ice sheet system or a glacier system, and so you're trying to understand how these large ice masses on Earth uh, interact with the other climate systems, whether it be the oceans, the atmosphere, um, or the rock beneath it, uh, how all these systems uh, interact with each other to, to show what we have today on Earth. Uh, glaciers are, and ice sheets are one of the fundamental aspects of the Earth's climate system, and so they are, they are what keeps us cool. Um, and so we have this ice sheet, grounded ice sheet in Antarctica, we have this sea ice ice cap uh, in the northern hemisphere, uh, and that, uh, just the fact that these are bright and white changes the Earth's energy balance. And so you start making, replacing, say, the sea ice in uh, the northern hemisphere, bright white sea ice, replace it with dark ocean, the Earth absorbs more energy, uh, and you're actually heating up the Earth just by that change in color. Uh, glaciers specifically, both Greenland and Antarctica, are fundamental in uh, global ocean circulation. And so, um, you start changing the geometry of the ice sheets and you can, you can change you know, the thousand year time scale of ocean circulation. And then finally, part of what I study is uh, lakes and river systems beneath the ice. And so these are, are hidden freshwater sources that all flow into the Southern Ocean. And so you can imagine trying to understand like coastal oceanography around North America, just like put an eraser over all the rivers and try and figure out what's going on in the coastal systems. It's really hard. These are sources of freshwater, they're sources of micronutrients. Uh, glaciers love eroding what's beneath them. And so you have this very fine grained material being pumped out uh, into the Southern Ocean and uh, part of uh, Part of my research is collaborating with microbiologists and trying to understand what lives underneath ice sheets. All of this ends up being dumped in the Southern Ocean, and so uh, that ends up uh, having a potentially large impacts on global carbon budgets, global freshwater budgets, and ocean circulation. So for glaciology research, I've uh, done work on three different continents. I've worked up in the Canadian Arctic uh, in Banff National Park, uh, Pado Glacier. I've done a bunch of ground field work, Athabasca Glacier. I've been up to Greenland once uh, for an airborne campaign with NASA's Operation Icebridge. Uh, and then I've spent nine field seasons in Antarctica. I've camped for a little bit over a year in a tent on the ice sheet. Um, driven 6,000 kilometers across the ice sheet. Um, I've also done airborne surveying in Antarctica as well. Most of my work historically has been in Antarctica, uh, particularly along the Sipel Coast, which is this really interesting coast that has uh, large ice streams. So these are like rivers of ice within slow moving ice around it uh, that just spontaneously change sometimes on hundreds to uh, thousands of years timescales. One place I work is uh, Willens Ice Stream, which moves almost like uh, an earthquake move. So it'll be stuck most of the day, and then once or twice a day, uh, related to actually ocean tides, it'll lurch forward about 50 centimeters. It's the largest moving mass on Earth ever, so bigger than the Mount St. Helens landslide, twice a day. And it's like this earthquake, it's a, the equivalent energy to a magnitude 7, magnitude 8 earthquake happening over about half an hour twice a day, and so it's this perfect laboratory for us to work on basal processes of ice sheets, to work on earthquake physics, and to really hone in on these um, processes that typically are hidden. I love the exploration part of this. So I go out and I make observations that no one else has made before, um, and to me that's really exciting. I really enjoy uh, working with the students and, and showing them that they can make fundamental observations of an Earth system that no, one, no one's done before. So glaciology historically has been a data limited field. Um, before we really had lots of spaceborne assets, which only has started in the past 20, 30 years, uh, you know, it was boots on the ground. When I started in this field, you could fit everyone who studies physical glaciology of Ant the Antarctic ice sheet, could fit them in one room. And so for us, the, the big change is just this burst of data that's coming from all of our satellite assets, whether it's imagers or altimeters, which just measure the surface height, or uh, SAR radar satellites uh, that uh, can measure ice velocity. And that's just going to fundamentally change uh, how we think about these sorts of ice sheet processes. So glaciology is still 
person limited. We, d we have so many questions and just not enough people um, trying to answer these questions. Um, and we need to be observing all the time everywhere. I'm really excited about the future of glaciology just in terms of what NASA is putting in the air. Uh, and so I set to launched in 2018. I was there at the launch. It was incredible. Uh, I watched my friends cry. They were so happy. Uh, and, and it was a successful launch. And so we have this laser altimeter uh, orbiting to 88 south, 88 north. And it can measure the surface with six laser beams at a time down to centimeters. Uh, and it, it orbits every 90 days. So every 90 days we get this new measurement of what the surface of the ice sheet looks like. The things we'll be able to do, the science we'll be able to produce based on this is just going to be fundamentally step change in how we think about these systems. Uh, I've been part of two large subglacial lake drilling projects, and so these are lakes beneath 1,000 meters of ice, 1,200 meters of ice. Um, these are totally hidden and isolated from the outside world currently, and we're trying to understand how these systems evolve, how are they connected, and when was the last time they were actually connected to the rest of the climate system, to oceans? And to, to be in the shipping container, which is usually the only hard side structure we have down there, to be in the shipping container with the TV showing the live feed from the camera that's down the hole under half a mile, three quarters of a mile of ice, and to see those first images of a subglacial lake, it's, it's the, the moon shot for us. Like, um, I'll never forget <laughs> the first time we put a camera in a subglacial lake was the weekend before the Super Bowl. And it was way more exciting than the Super Bowl. And I'll just never forget the energy in that, in that shipping container when, so the camera just goes black when it hits the mud. Um, and then it turned on its side and you start to see some sediment washing in front of the camera. And it was like looking at pictures of Mars and it was right beneath our feet, half a mile. It was, uh, it's something I'll never forget. So one of the parts of doing Antarctic field work that I really like is you go out into the middle of nowhere, 500 miles from the nearest research station, from the nearest people, you're, you know, four people, eight people in this tiny little camp living in tents, and it just distills everything down to the most basic things you need. And you totally lose that instinct to pull out your cell phone and, and look up a fact. You're sitting down at dinner and arguing about things. And um, that's, that's one of my favorite parts of field work. I, I, the longest field season I've done out in a tent was 60 days. So it's 60 days in a tent. So when you're trying to sleep, uh, everything is yellow because that's the color of the tent uh, and it's light. Uh, it, makes it, it makes it tough. For me, one of the uh, most unique feelings about field work is when you get dropped off by the airplane. So we're flying out in an LC-130, which is basically a, a blimp with, with skis. Um, and they drop us off with our palletized cargo, and then they leave. And you're standing around on an ice sheet, it's flat and white in every direction. And you're like, well, I guess we gotta crack into these or we're gonna die. So like, there's just this rush that I've never had anywhere else where it's like, we gotta get this done because our survival depends on it. 